All right. Yep, we're good. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, coming on to uh, our little tour today. Uh, I'm Farmer Joe. Uh, I'm here with my wife, Marianne, and we're on our apple farm. Uh, it's called Great Lakes Farms uh, in Port Stanley, Ontario. So uh, just a little history about us. Uh, Marianne's uh, opa came from Holland uh, into Canada uh, during the 50s and started growing apples here. And then we've been growing apples since 2008 ourselves. Um, we grow roughly 20 different varieties of apples. And we also have about 70 acres of apples. Uh, and we grow roughly 3 million pounds of apples per year. So uh, we're part of a larger group of apple growers, uh, the Ontario apple growers, uh, which roughly grow around 15 different varieties of apples on 16,000 acres in Ontario. And we roughly grow around 300 million bushels of apples. So uh, with that, I would like to uh, go to the springtime. Well, there's a lot of hard work going on uh, during apple growing. Um, harvest is also like, harvest is the best time. Uh, we're picking apples here right now. We're picking gala apples, uh, as you can see. Uh, but there, there is a lot of hard work throughout the year uh, to make apples grow uh, and taste really, really well. Yes, so as you can see, we're here in the fall time. Lots of apples being picked for the grocery store, uh, but the work starts long before that. In the winter time, we need to prune the trees. We use something like this called a pruner. Uh, there's different types. Some are automatic, um, some are hand pruners like this. And basically what we wanna do is give the trees a haircut. So in the winter time, the trees look a lot different. There's no leaves on the trees, so we can see the branches really well. And what we wanna do is we wanna cut the tree kind of in a Christmas tree shape. So we'll cut some of the big stuff off and maybe the stuff that's sticking out too much. And then make sure there's some opening. This is so we can get the sunlight in so the apples can get nice and big and nice and red and juicy. So it doesn't seem to take very long. Probably takes us two or three minutes per tree. But if you remember, Farmer Joe said we have lots of acres of apples, so it almost takes us all winter to prune. And some days it is really, really cold and it's lots of hard work. Now, after winter, what season comes next? Can any of you guys guess? What season comes after the cold winter? Did any of you guys say spring? Oh, that's right. In the springtime, the apple trees get these little flowers. And uh, teachers, if you have time after, you can pull up some pictures of apple blossoms or we also will have a video available to you. Uh, the trees look really nice in the spring. Now each of those apple or each of those flowers can turn into an apple, but it needs to be visited by a special bug. Can anybody guess what kind of bug that might be? Did anybody say bees? Yeah, that's right. Bees are really important to the orchard. If they visit the flower, then it can become an apple. Another problem we have in the spring is the flowers can be really sensitive to cold. And sometimes in the spring, the, the mornings are really, really cold. Um, and Farmer Joe doesn't want those flowers to freeze because then they can't be turned into apples. So he installed these things called wind machines. You can see it in the distance there. It's like a really, really big fan. So if it's gonna be a cold morning, Farmer Joe will turn the fan on and it will push the hot air down and keep the flowers warm so that they can turn into apples. Now, once the flowers turn into apples, they're not these nice, big, juicy apples that we like to eat. They're really small. So if you look at the size of your thumb, the baby apples are probably about the size of your thumb. Do you think they would taste good? No, they're really green and gross. But we have to take good care of them so they can turn into the apples we like to eat. One thing in the springtime is there's lots of different diseases or bad, app or bad bugs that can hurt the apples. So we're always looking to see what's in the orchard. Uh, we use a lot of different monitoring. 
So we focus on spending a lot of time looking to see what's there. Some bugs like uh, bright colors. You guys can see this is sticky, kind of like peanut butter. So um, some bugs will be attracted to this. Other bugs might be attracted to different smells. So there might be like a lure in here and then they'll like the smell and they'll stick to here. Some are attracted to different shapes. And basically we're always looking. And if we see a lot of a bad kind of bug, so say the threshold is 100, say there's 100 on this sheet, then only then, then, we, then Farmer Joe will have to go and spray. And in Canada, um, all the stuff that we use is really highly regulated. It's all newer stuff and it's pretty safe. And um, we only use it if uh, we have to. Then after the spring comes another season. Can anybody guess what season that is? Oh, did you say summer? Summer is my favorite season because we get to go swimming. It's nice and warm. And Farmer Joe's going to teach us a little bit more about what's going on in the orchard during the summertime. Okay, so in the summertime, uh, apples need lots of light. They need lots of time and they need lots of water to grow. So in the summertime, yeah, we they need lots of light. So we, what we do is we will prune a little bit in the summertime. We will prune some of the branches back to let the apples get lots and lots of light inside to get lots of beautiful, nice color. Also, they need lots of water. So this year we've had lots of rain, but in a year where we don't have much rain, we actually have some little tubes here and we can turn on the tap and we can deliver water to the trees so they can, uh, keep growing and then they also need lots and lots of time to get nice and big and juicy for us to eat so after the summer what comes after summer can anybody uh guess what season it is did anyone say fall yes absolutely fall is the best time for apple picking we get to pick the apples that we've grown all season long so there is a trick to picking apples. Uh, we like to use a little phrase called eye to the sky. So what we do is the bottom of the apple is what we call the eye. And what we do is apples hang down. We just say eye to the sky. We lift them off and they come right off into your hand. Really, really nice. So when we're picking, you just pick the apples off, roll them up, eye to the sky. And we have to be very, very careful with apples as they bruise very easy. So when we're picking, be very careful with them and put them in a basket for picking. Just like this. It's really, really easy and it's lots of fun. Does anyone have any questions? Anshika wonders, how old is your orchard? The oldest apple trees that we have on the farm were planted in 1988. And the youngest apple trees we have were just planted this spring. Jaden is wondering why the apples are on the ground. So some apples um, don't have enough color or when they get mature, they can fall off the tree if you don't pick them in time. So that's why some of them are on the ground. How long does it take for an apple tree to grow? So an apple tree, it starts growing right away when we plant it and it will start uh, giving you apples uh, after about three to four years. So in that first few years, we take the apples off so that the tree can grow nice and strong before we let um, apples grow on it. And um, the trees that we plant in the ground are usually a two year tree that we buy from a nursery. So they will graft an apple, say we want a Mac tree, they will grab, graft an apple, a Mac bud onto uh, a dwarfing rootstock. I don't know if you can see the bump on the bottom here. So this is actually like a dwarfing rootstock. So it keeps the tree nice and small which makes it easier for us to do all of our work in the orchard. 
How long does it take to pick all the apples? <laughs> uh, we start mid-September and we usually wrap up picking about the first week of November. Do you pick all the apples by hand? Yes, every single apple is picked by hand. Alvin is wondering why apples are different colors. It's just the different varieties. Um, Macintosh and Empire can have a nice dark red. Um, Gala and Ambrosia can be a really nice bright red. There's also green apples like Matsu and Granny Smith. Uh, yellow apples like Golden Delicious. Um, any others you can yeah. think of? Yeah, we're gonna go inside. When we go inside, we're gonna we have all the varieties there, so you can see all the different kinds. But apples are special, where different kinds of apples actually look different. Yeah, that's awesome. Somebody was just asking about about the varieties, so we'll see those all when we get into the market. Okay, so apples taste good by themselves, but they can also be made into lots of different products. So um, we're gonna head inside and then show you some different things that apples can be made into. Um, while we're moving, if you guys could um, share some things that you think apples can, turn, uh, can be made into on the screen, that would be great. Okay, we're gonna move. All right, we're just gonna head into the Apple Barn entrance here. For those of you that don't know, we do have a pumpkin patch on the farm as well. These are some of the pumpkins from out there that we bring in, but you can also go out and pick your own. And then this is the market here. So we sell apple cider, lots of apple products. And lots of goodies, too. All right, we're going to take a walk through here and meet Mary, Mary Ann and Farmer Joe. So here we have some of our apple varieties here. There's lots of discussions about um, different varieties. So maybe you see your favorite kind here. Some are sweet, like the Ambrosia and the Macintosh, or not Macintosh, the Gala and the Fuji. And some are more tart, like the Max and the Spies and the Matsu and the Empire. So if you don't think you like apples, maybe you just haven't tried enough varieties. There's lots of different flavors and colors and stuff there for everybody. Now, some of these varieties are really good for eating, like the Ambrosia and the Gala. And some are made better for baking. Um, we like to use the spies in our pies. So I know you guys, while we were moving, you were thinking of some different things that we can make um, 
apples into you. Um, Before you go on, we have a question for you guys. What are your favorite kinds of apples? Uh, no? Mine is the Ambrosia. Uh, it's a very nice, sweet tasting apple, very nice, crisp texture to eat. Uh, that's my favorite. Uh, and my favorite is the Empire. It might be because it is one of the easiest apples to grow and one of the easiest apples to pick. When you pick Empires, you can pick them very quickly. Um, is it a little bit more of a tart apple? It's actually a cross between a Red Delicious and a Macintosh. All right, and I saw lots of answers popping up with things you could make with apples. And here's a small selection of what we have. So we have some apple cider, which gets pressed in Delhaven, Cedar Springs. Uh, some sparkling cider from the cider keg on uh, Simcoe. And then we have our applesauce. There's some apple butter, which is good on toast, or you can use it um, to marinate meat. We've got our apple pie in a jar, which is just basically as delicious as it sounds. It's a jam with apple pie. And apple jelly, which is a little bit clearer. And then our fresh baked goods. We've got apple crisp, apple cookies, apple muffins. And my favorite are apple pie. So our apple pies are all made with spy apples. And we usually put about eight cups of apples in each of our pies. There's also um, the Ontario Apple Growers has a great website with lots of different recipes. So if you want to make your apples into delicious things, there's some recipes on onapples.com. And then there's also other great links through Eggscape and all the other great partners from the tour. So any more questions from the tour? Do you add new apple trees every spring? And if so, how many? Yes, uh, normally it's either every year or every other year. And we usually plant about 5,000 apple trees uh, at a time. And there is a, a video that will be put up later and there is some um, footage of us planting the apple trees. So teachers, if you have time later, you can see the machinery and how it works. Um, the trees, because they're smaller, they also have uh, big posts and wires to help them stay up so they don't fall over with all those apples on them. And then another question is, do we export our apples? So most of our apples go through the wholesale channels. Um, if you saw the pickers, they were picking them in those big boxes. Those big boxes are called bins. Um, usually about every day or so, depending on picking, um, a transport truck will come. And those big boxes will go into the truck, usually about 70, 72 to 73 bins uh, on a truck. From there, they will go, um, some of them will get packed and go to the grocery store right away. And some of them will get put into storage, which is basically like a big refrigerator. And they can stay in there for a long time. Um, some of them use like controlled atmosphere. So basically it makes them stay even longer. And then we can enjoy Ontario apples all year. Do you wash your own apples or do you have a machine? Um, most of, uh, we do have a small machine, but most of our apples get washed um, where they get refrigerated at a packer. So we grow for many different apple packers in Ontario and they have a big machine to wash them there. Again, there is, um, there's some footage of that on, on the video if the teachers have time to show that later. And then Mrs. Esnerd's class wants to know how many different types of apples there are in Ontario. Uh, there is <laughs> roughly uh, 15 different varieties. There, there will be a few more um, that are not very popular. There will be some smaller ones. Um, but mainly it, there's 15 different varieties in Ontario. And another cool uh, little note is there is roughly over 6,000 different uh, varieties of apples worldwide and then but in the grocery store, there's like four main types that we grow for the grocery stores which is your gala your ambrosia honey crisp and then still quite a few like maximum farmers yeah how many years can a tree produce apples um i know of some trees that are well over 40 years old uh, and still producing lots and lots of delicious apples how do apples change color? 
So the best way is apples really like sunny, warm days and cool nights. So the sun shining on the apples gets them really, really nice and red. And then the cool nights helps that red really get on the apple. What do you do with the apples that are rotten or have fallen to the ground? So the apples that are rotten, we just leave them there and they will rot into the ground. Uh, and then the ones that are not rotten will get picked up and get made into apple juice. And the ones that rot into the ground provide fertilizer and stuff that will help the next year's apples grow. So it's never wasted. How do you keep the worms and other bugs out of the apples? We talked about it a little bit with the trap. So if there's just a few bad bugs, then they'll just eat a few apples and we don't worry about it too much. But if there's a lot of different types or a lot of a bad kind of bug, then we typically do need to spray. And um, if teachers, if you have time to watch that video again, there's a video of a spraying. It's like a tractor uh, with an air blast sprayer. So it just provides, puts product on the apples to protect them. And all the products that we use in Canada are highly regulated and um, safe. Why do the apples change color when they are cut open? Well, that's a good question. I might have to look that one up. Do you so, know the scientific so, way? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> it's called oxidation. So when you cut them, uh, some of them will turn brown just from the oxygen in the air that reacts with the flesh of the apple. Now, there are some apples, like a Cortland, that are great for using in salads because when you cut them open, they don't brown from uh, being in contact with the air. Don't brown as quickly. Don't brown as quickly, yes. Which one is the highest selling apple or apples? I would say Honeycrisp is, is the most popular. That's, Really but pounds wise, probably Gala, just yes. because they store well and they're really versatile. Do you make your own jams pot, and pies on site or is it made somewhere else? So we do make all of the pies and stuff on site. Um, in the, with the jams and stuff, we work with a local lady that does the preserving for us. And then with the cider, we work with um, Delhaven Orchards in Cedar Springs. How do you keep the trees safe in the winter? Well, we do, we do put out, um, we put, try to protect them from um, mice and uh, rodents because they can eat the bark. So we make sure that there's not too many leaves and we keep everything clean and the grass is cut. Yep. And if needed, then we'll put out, um, to, the, to keep the rodents away. How often do you have to water the apple trees? Ideally, uh, an apple tree would like an inch of water per week. So uh, usually it gets some nice summer rains and we usually achieve that. But if we don't, uh, like previous in our tour, uh, we don't get the rain, then we will give them some water uh, about an inch a week. Yes. Yeah, so, so this year, I don't think we had to turn it on at all. We didn't turn it on. And then last year was very dry, so it was running quite a bit. So we always try to give that inch of rain. So it depends on what mother nature gives us. And then the irrigation just does the rest. How do you remember which kind of apples you are dealing with? Liam says he wouldn't be able to tell the difference. <laughs> well, Liam, it comes with experience. We have, uh, we have a lot of students that help us in the fall. And uh, you know, they typically start at grade nine and they can't tell the difference. And they're not really sure. And then usually just over time, by the time they're in grade 11 or grade 12, they're also apple as experts and they can tell the difference. So it just, just takes practice. How many apple trees do we have in our orchard? So we have roughly 55,000 apple trees here on the farm. How do you know the, if the apple is sweet or not? Well, based Just on the variety them. and then to see if it's ready or not, um, we'll do a lot of, if you can cut it open, if the pits are starting to turn brown, then they're ready to harvest. And then also you will sometimes do like a starch test. We'll do a starch test to see when the starch in the apple turns to sugar. 
And that's when you know the apples are ready to pick for eating. Does it take a special kind of soil to grow an apple tree? And how long does it take an apple to grow? So apples can be grown in various kinds of soil, uh, whether it's a sandy loam or a uh, loamy clay. Uh, they can grow pretty much anywhere. And how long? I would say, like... Like the apple itself takes the year. Actually, the buds, and we should maybe look that, that out there. The buds for next year's crop are already on the tree. So they'll make the buds this year. And then next year, those buds will turn into the flower and grow into the apple. And then also uh, we're dealing with soils. Um, we can grow apples here because it's fairly mild. There are parts of Canada that get too cold and the trees wouldn't be able to survive the winter. Uh, but I think from Georgian Bay down to the south part here, um, we can grow, yeah, along the Great Lakes, we can grow lots of uh, delicious Ontario apples. Daria wonders, do any of the apples turn into different shapes, not round? Okay, like the red delicious is a little bit longer and it has the bumps on the bottom. Mm. Usually the ambrosia is a little bit longer as well. And then some varieties like Mac are really like short, short and rounder. Lots of different shapes and sizes. Usually all kind of round, but different versions of round, if that answers the question. Do you both eat apples every day? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yeah. They do taste a little bit better when they're fresh off the tree than they do in the winter, but they are always good. Yes. Thanks for a great tour. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Yes, thank you very much. We really enjoyed having you here. Thanks for coming. And then there's uh, lots of different links for more information.